Have you recently been finding yourself asking, man, when is Hollywood gonna make movies about men just being men again? Well, someone was listening because we have that movie. It's called The Bike Riders. A story of men hitting the open road, hitting the bar, and hitting each other. Told through the eyes of a woman. <laughs> Wait, what? The trailer for The Bike Riders did nothing for me. It has a star-studded cast, but outside of that, I just wasn't that interested in what it was putting out there. I went in with very low expectations. The question is, did I come out feeling the same, or did it win me over? Let's talk about it. Written and directed by Jeff Nichols, this 2023 movie, not 2024 according to IMDb, I'm not sure if it got shelved for a year or what happened, but uh, apparently it was done last year. It stars a bunch of cool people. It's got Tom Hardy, Austin Butler, Michael Shannon, Jodie Comer, and because it has to do with motorcycles, Norman Reedus is going to be seen cameoing here and there, just kind of wandering around. He wakes up in the morning and he gets the sense that a motorcycle is nearby and he must be on it. They're making a movie, I have to get involved somehow. I don't know how misleading the trailers were for this because I only saw the one. I will just say, if you're going to this film thinking it's gonna be a, you know, a biker gang versus biker gang showdown, a lot of riding around on the open road, a lot of action, a lot of thrills, nah, not really. No, instead we're gonna take this vantage point from the woman. Uh, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. Ba basically, it revolves around Jodie Comer's character who is really laying on that thick Midwestern accent. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Minnesota originally. So hearing the don't you knows and the yas and everything, oh, it was, uh, it's triggering. I will say that. And she's really laying it on thick. But I love Jodie Comer. She's a delight here as well. She wins me over pretty early on with her likableness and her kind of tough as nails attitude, not taking a lot of shit from people. And she's really a fish out of water in this movie. She's going to be the person that we view everything through. She goes into the bar, gets her first look at these seedy individuals, and they win her over. And she ends up falling for one of them. And really, how could she not get the hots for Austin Butler? He is channeling James Dean. Rebel without a cause attitude here. The only thing missing are the cigarettes underneath the sleeve. And he's really got no personality at all. He just kind of looks good, purses the lips, leans on motorcycles, and that's his entire character. And Benny's just an all-around unlikable prick. It's all based around the fact that this guy doesn't want anything from no nobody. Benny is a drifter, but he finds a place within this club, which is ran by Tom Hardy's character, Johnny. Johnny built this biker gang up from the ground. The Vandals is what they go by. They got the cool jackets. They, of course, have their custom motorcycles. And they love to ride. And they love to drink. I feel like they do the latter a lot more than they do the former. Because there's just a lot of sitting around, kind of shooting the shit. I don't know what the deal is with Tom Hardy lately. I haven't watched him in any interviews or out in public speaking to people, but he's got a weird voice. In a lot of movies I see him in, I'm not, I'm not counting Bane. I just mean even in the Venom movies, his voice is really interesting. <laughs> I guess for the lack of a better word. It's weird, and in this movie it is too. These are supposed to be kind of tough-as-nails guys, but Tom Hardy's like, Hey, well, you want to join the gang? You want to be part of what I got going on here? Bada-bing, bada-bang, bada-boom, bada-penis. It's not really coming off that threatening. It's, it's more almost comical. The way this movie presents itself is there's a college student doing a thesis of sorts on this club, on this gang of motorcyclers, and so he's recording them, he's taking notes, he's doing photos, and a lot of it's going to be spent chatting with Jodie Comer since she is the character that's kind of thrown into this because she falls head over heels for one of the guys in the club. A lot of conversations with her, a lot of her vantage point of what's going on. And while there are some action moments, there are some fun moments, there's some good brawls, there's some good, I, I, I mean, they, they really don't ride their motorcycles that much, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> they do the annoying revving of the engines and there's some shots where they're kind of cruising around, but for the most part, yeah, they're, they're sitting, standing, talking, chatting, drinking, and occasionally punching each other. The first act of this movie is treated more as a love story, which I found very little interest in. But when we got to the middle, which typically is the spot in the film where things kind of slow down or they get a little muddy, this I found the best section of the film. I thought once we got to the halfway mark, 
things were really kicking into gear. Some stories were being set up. Some interesting ideas were presenting themselves. And then we fall on our face in the final act. Now, this is obviously subjective, but where I thought it was going to go, and unfortunately where it ended up going, was a disappointment, to say the least. This third act kind of blows. And it's a disappointment because I think it really could have kicked ass at the end and become a pretty special movie. As it stands, The Bike Riders is a watchable, kind of mediocre affair. It's got some solid cinematography. It is a time period piece. It takes place in the late 60s, early 70s. They give it a bit of a washed out look, which I can't say I'm thrilled with, but it's also not like a horrible thing all the same. But I just, yeah, th there's really not a whole lot here where I can say, oh wow, th this blew me away. This was really great. Go out and watch The Bike Riders. Y you would do fine watching this at home on a rainy Sunday afternoon. The last thing I'll say is this, where the movie finally ends up introducing some antagonists to the picture, which happened way too late in the game for me, because again, that's not really what this movie's about. I'm not really sure what this movie's about, to be honest with you. If that was the first act, and we focused on the rivalry between different gangs, or at least if it presented itself more in the middle act of the movie, then I think we have something a lot more exciting and interesting for the types of people that are gonna go to this film. As it stands, it's almost a character study told again through the eyes of the bike rider's wife, which is really what this movie should have been called. I will say again to its credit, some really intense moments with Jodie Comer, especially when we get to a party scene later, I was in genuine fear for her. Uh, that, that was definitely the best part of the movie, the strongest part, but it's short-lived along with pretty much anything that gets ratcheted up to a level where you're concerned for people. Instead, it just kind of coasts by at a respectable pace. All right, those are my thoughts on The Bike Riders. Let me know if you saw it, if you even heard of it. It kind of has come out of nowhere, I think, in the last couple months. And, and most people I ask about it are like, what? What is this film that you're talking about? Is this on Netflix? That's where we're at in life. Unless you're an inside out or something that really speaks to a broad range of people, you might not even know this one's in theaters. But it is, and I saw it, and here's your review. Let me know if you saw it. Please comment below, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews, TV conversations, rants, roasts, everything in between entertainment, focusing mostly on movies here. Because I do movies. And I'd love to have you stick around. Alright, take care.